Jeff, I came here tonight to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was too busy. I'm sorry I was so concerned about myself that I forgot about you. I, I claimed to be a Christian, yet that night that you came to my house drunk, I, I threw you out. Jesus said that as Christians, we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves, yet that night, I failed you, as I have many other times. I asked the Lord to forgive me, and he has, but he reminded me. I need your forgiveness, too. Yeah, it's okay. Sure, it's okay. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. Liz, Terry? Oh, I didn't expect to see you here. You were with Jeff. Yes, I just left him. He's resting now. Well, what did you say the last time he got so upset? I know. I didn't upset him. I just stopped by to see how he was. I'm sorry, Scott. Sometimes I have trouble coping with this. It's like he's given up on living. If he could just believe that he can make it. It's up to Jeff to take the first step. I know. I know. We'll pray for him let God take care of the rest. I wish it were as easy as you make it sound, Scott. We trust in the Lord and he takes care of us. It isn't always that easy, Liz. I mean, look at us. I don't have a job. Terry's become a full-time breadwinner. And I don't even know if any of my prospects are any good. But? But somehow the Lord always sees us through and meets our needs. Why can't Jeff just believe in God? He's always been a dreamer, chasing rainbows. I guess he figured he could just go through life without ever having to do anything for himself. And now that the bottom's fallen out, he won't listen to anyone who so much as mentions God. Liz, I believe that Jeff can get through this. I also believe that God is the only one can do it. But first, he has to take that first step. That's where it stops, that first step of asking. Thanks for coming by, Scott, and, and please don't give up on him. <laughs> don't worry about it. He's in our prayers every day. I'll drop by a little later. Are you all right? I mean, what did you and Jeff talk about? Oh, I'm fine. It's just, uh, I had to take care of something. Uh, look, I have to go. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Watch the kissing in the hall, Davidson. Please talk to me. What's the matter? Is it something that Scott said? Jeff, please, I'm your wife. Talk to me. I'd say from the look of this lease that you might be planning to stay for a while. Providing I can, if this agreement looks all right. No, oh, I don't see any reason why not. It's pretty standard. Two years with option for renewal, remodeling, and maintenance. I'd say you shouldn't have anything to shy away from. Well, in that case, I might as well sign my life away, as they say. Well, now, hold on just a minute there, son. Before you sign this here now document, there's some things I don't know about you. Well, I thought you were only interested in my lease and your fee. Well, now, my fee we can discuss later, probably over lunch that you're going to buy me. No, sir. Ah, uh, that is what I have to find out is about your intentions. You see, a nosy old man like me can't let an opportunity like this go by. I see. Well, should we start with my um, personal statistics? Name, rank, and serial number? No, actually. I'm more interested in why a, a young, promising doctor with, oh, everything going for him. 
possibly even the possibility of becoming a, a, a specialist in New York City or San Francisco, would want to set up a private practice where she ain't going to make any money in a little old town like this. Maybe I like the small town atmosphere. Oh, and maybe you like the looks of the patients here? <laughs> well, no matter. You know, you may find it hard to believe, but I remember exactly what it's like to set up a brand new practice. Oh, yes, sir, I was going to be another William Jennings Bryan. Have all kinds of famous clients come to me from all over the country. Pay me a fortune to take care of their legal affairs. <laughs> yes, sir, I was going to set the legal world on fire. What happened? I, I'm, I don't mean that this isn't a good practice, but if you would... Yeah. If I had had that kind of success, I probably would be retired by now. Hmm? Be vacationing down in Florida. Well, the truth of it is, I found out that I like just to be a good lawyer. To take care of people's problems, their legal problems. Whether it's a dog bites a neighbor or going over a lease agreement. I got the feeling that you're kind of the same way. Would you like a bit of free medical advice from a friend? Sure. You ought to cut that out. My pipe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been smoking that all my life. <laughs> that may very well be, but uh, it still doesn't alter the fact that it's bad for you. Look, forget that I'm a doctor and as a friend, let me tell you that when you smoke, it narrows the blood vessels in the arms and the legs, cutting down on the circulation, and that's bad. And suppose it didn't cause lung cancer or cancer of the mouth. It still causes emphysema, and that's a killer, too. Look, at least do yourself a favor and um, at least think about it. Well, I haven't been sick yet. And at my age, all those things that you mentioned, eh? They really don't worry me none. But uh, since it worries you so much, I tell you what I'll do. I'll consider what you say, okay? Okay. In the meantime, I would suggest, as far as your lease here is concerned, that you can sign it without any terrible misgivings. Property has been taken for 11 years, small professional building is a dentist and a couple of attorneys, they're likable sorts, and a CPA. It's all in order. And I would say with a two-year lease, uh, you're going to be around here for a while. According to the lease, at least two years. <laughs> Should I say, what had we here? It's a knife sharpener, or will be when I finish with it. Want some coffee made by former anchorman and all-around great guy? How can I refuse an offer like that? <laughs> Ooh, that is unique. Would you make it with, the coffee or the pot cleaner? Very funny. Oh, where's Lori? Well, I sent her to the market to pick up some things. I want to save you a trip. Uh, I would have picked them up myself, but I wanted to get this thing finished before the day's over. Hey, guess what? I have an interview Wednesday. Really? Where is it? Well, it's in Charlotte. I want to go down Tuesday night so I can be bright-eyed and pushy tail on Wednesday for my appointment. You want to know why I stopped by to see Jeff, don't you? Yes, but only if you want to tell me. Well... I would have told you in the hospital, but I didn't want to talk when Liz was there. Quite frankly, my conscience has been bothering me ever since that time I threw Jeff out. And I felt the Lord wanted me to write it. Mm. It's been bothering me too, Scott. If ever we have to set a Christian example, it's now. Jeff needs all the support he can get. But do you think he'll really hear what you have to say in the condition he's in? I mean, it seems like he's given up on everything. He may have given up, but God hasn't given up on him. You're right. You know something else? What's that? I'm awfully glad that I married you, Scott Davidson. <laughs> and you know something? 
Unemployed or not, I just had the best night's sleep I've had in a long time. <laughs> Coming. Hey, Liz, so glad you could come by. Come on in, please. Hi, Mitch, how are you? Just fine. How would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, that'd be great. How do you take it? Uh, just black. I could use a little lift right now. Alrighty. I know you're curious to know why I asked you to come by. Let me show you that I only want to offer my services to you as a friend. I talked it over with Terry and Scott, and we figured that uh, I might be able to help in some little way. Well, I don't think I could afford an attorney right now. You know, I have a lot of expenses that are piling up. Well, now, who said anything about charging? No, whatever services I give you are going to be completely without charge as a friend. Now, why don't you just sit down, drink your coffee, and relax? I'm sorry, Mitch. I guess I'm just not myself. Uh, please forgive me. Oh, there is no need. I guess I, I just don't know what help you could be to me right now. You see, Scott and Terry are helping, and I don't have any real legal problems, at least not yet. Well, now, I may be able to go over your health insurance policies and... See if there's what percentage you're paying. You see, we wouldn't want to have any any financial problems looming up there. And then uh, I might be able to look at the state plans. You know, kind of see if there's anything to help clarify things for you to understand. Thank you, Mitch. That's very generous of you, and I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, the reason I, I had you come by here, rather than calling you on the telephone, Get you away from that hospital for a while. <laughs> That's very thoughtful of you. As a matter of fact, I was considering contacting you to get some advice. Uh, there are a couple of things that I would like some straight answers on. Exactly my intentions. Now, if you have any legal questions, I assure you I'll give you a straight answer. Now, what can I answer for you? If he wants to. Does Jeff have the right to die? I tried your doorbell a couple of times, but it didn't hear it ringing. Well, that's because Mr. Wizard there has decided to take the house apart while he's home. He's had the power off over there for over two hours. I'm starting to worry. It's almost finished. I'll have it back on in a couple of minutes, oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you have a good time playing with your tools, and don't fix anything else, okay? <laughs> Bye, honey. Listen, Gene, I'm sorry I've got to run, but my shift starts soon. Have a nice day, Terry. Hey, and don't worry. I won't let him tackle anything else. <laughs> hey, come on, sit down. I need a break. Can I get you some coffee or something? No, thanks. I thought you were going to have that wall switch fixed and the power back on in a couple of minutes. Well, I need a couple of minutes to make sure I have the circuitry right. Anyway, mm -hmm. what's new in your life? Anything new in the job market? No, and I'm starting to get worried. I can't seem to get anything to connect, and I don't mind telling you, things are getting a little tight, so... Well, listen, Gene. You know I'm not a wealthy man, but I have enough to get by on. I'd be more than happy to, to let you have some until oh, something yeah. shows up. Oh, thanks. Look, I appreciate your offer, but I can make it at least for the time being. <sighs> okay, but any time you change your mind in the future, the offer's still open. Sure, sure. Thanks for being a friend, man. <laughs> Forget it. Hey, you're looking very dapper. Got another interview? No, not really. As a matter of fact, I'm considering getting out of broadcasting. Everyone's always out for each other's blood, and Mom's been trying to get me into looking into working for the county. Mm. You know, civil service, yeah. and have to die to be let go, and I don't know, I might look into it. I think you ought to stick in TV, Gene. I think you got a future there. Well, maybe, but that doesn't put bread on the table, man. Doesn't it bother you that Terry's supporting your family while you're puttering around the house and going out on interviews and... Well, sure, it bothers me, but I believe something will turn up. I believe God's going to open a door for me. In the meantime, I, Terry's helping out and enjoying it. Mm. Gene, I don't have all the answers. I only know what works for me. Oh, well, wish I could be as sure as you are. 
tried praying about it? Well, you know, I've got a lot to do, and Mom's got all those lines tied up. Hey, I gotta get going, old buddy. <clears throat> hey, listen, before you go, can you do me a favor? Sure, what is it? Do you know anything about electric circuits? I didn't want to disturb you. I just want to know how Jeff was. Oh, thank you. He's asleep right now. You must be exhausted. You could use a break. Yeah, I do feel like I'm on the go 24 hours a day. Oh, I know the feeling. I've been through it myself. Look, don't worry about dinner. I just came by to find out how Jeff was and to tell you that I stopped by your house to leave a little bite to eat there. You just have to heat it up. Yeah. Thank you for being kind. <laughs> I wish that Jeff had a shoulder he could cry on. Someone that he trusted enough to really let go of. Well, oh, I'm pretty sure God has someone in mind. Let's see. Boil at medium heat until soft to touch with a fork. Hey, Chef, what's Remove for dinner? Heat and... Oh, hi, Mitch. I saw Peter out in front. He said uh, you were back here in the galley. Uh, forgive me for saying so if it's not true, but is that supposed to be the dinner? It was. I was just about ready to chuck the whole thing and send out for pizza. Well, now, just hold your horses. Let a man of experience here lend a hand here. All right. Oh, really? Just step aside, son. Huh? Now, let's see. First of all, well, would you look at this? Mm -hmm. Master Chef. Would you learn how to do all that? Oh, that's how that goes. Country cooking, if I ever saw him. Such a flair. Look at this. What did you... I believe this. Artistic, too. Believe it or not, you're all ready to go. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. <laughs> Afraid I'll never be another galloping gourmet. You saved me from a fate worse than death. You know, if Terry came in here and saw what I did to her recipe, let, let alone this kitchen here, I hate to think about it. Well, Counselor, what is your fee for this kind of service? Well, how about a little coffee and conversation? That's what I came over here for. Well, judging from the majority reaction, I think that you better stick with the conversation. Oh. My coffee isn't... Everybody's favorite. I suppose I could uh, get along without the coffee. Anyhow. Oh, that's a wise decision. Did you see Liz today? Yes, sir. She dropped by and we had a good chat. I uh, think it did her some good to get away from everything for a little while at least. Did she accept your offer? As a matter of fact, she's going to come by the office next week and give me her insurance policies. I'll look up them over and see if everything's okay. Good. I never did understand those things. Too much legal mumbo-jumbo for me. Uh, Scott, I... Uh, I might as well come to the real reason for my visit. Well, sure. What's on your mind? Well, there is no delicate way for me to say this, so I'm just going to make it blunt. I am considering petitioning the court in order to have Jeff Cummins declared mentally incompetent. And I would like you to appear as a witness on Liz's behalf. You could use a cup of coffee. Oh, thank you. I sure could. How's Jeff? Oh, I guess about the same. He doesn't seem to want to talk to me at all. He just stares. I might as well not even be there. Well, I'm sure he knows you're there and that he really appreciates it. 
It's just that Jeff is going through one of the toughest things he'll ever have to face. And I don't think he really knows how to react right now, to you or to anyone. Well, I guess you're right. I just feel numb sometimes, and when he won't talk to me, I don't know what to do. Well, I don't mean to lay all my troubles on you, Terry. It's been a long day, starting with my meeting with Mitch Dunbar this morning. Oh, and... I'm glad you got to meet with Mitch this morning. I hope he can help. I know he really wants to. Yes, I think he can. I'm going to meet with him in a few days and go over Jeff's health insurance policies. He's going to look at them and make sure everything's in order. By the way, please thank Nora for stopping by today. It was so sweet of her, and she just showed up at the right time, just like you do. <laughs> well, it's all part of my job, Mrs. Cummings, nothing oh. more. Oh, yes, I'm sure that all the nurses take just as much interest in their patients' families as you do. It's a new service of the hospital. We want all our patients and their families to have only the best. I do have a problem with Jennifer that uh, I don't know how to handle Terry. Well, tell me. One of her playmates at school told her that her father was in the hospital because he was a drunk. Oh, poor baby. How could children be so poor? Well, it isn't the children. They hear it from their parents. Besides, Jenny knows that he drinks. What she doesn't know is that her father's dying. 